Hello everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for W Plus 9 and I'm excited to be guest designing and creating a couple of scene cards with the brand new New Home stamps and dies. We'll even incorporate the welcome wreath and welcome dies into one of the card designs. I am stamping my designs to create scenes and coloring everything today with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers for that watercolored look, but very easy with these markers. We're going to start with the double lines stamp from the new home stamp set, and I am first stamping this on a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock trimmed to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this most of the way down a portrait style panel. Then I'm going to quickly go in on each of these lines and lay in just a tiny bit of gray ink and blend it out with the light gray zig marker before blending completely out with the blender pen. The beauty of this is I want this, this is siding for a house. I want it to appear to be white, but I want it to have some shading. So I went in and added that dark first and then blended it out a little bit with the light gray before taking the blender, which has no color on it at all, and blending those colors out towards the center of the panel. And I'm gonna continue doing this if at any time the gray colors start pulling way too much into the design, you probably have too much of the color on the tip of the blender pen. Go ahead and wipe that off on a scrap piece of paper. I always keep a scrap piece of paper handy when coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to clean the tips of my lighter markers, or in this case, the blender marker off as I'm working. I'm working really quickly with these markers just to get that color laid down. Now along the bottom edge, I'm gonna go a lot heavier with my gray marker and light gray marker as I'm making this the porch for my scene card. I did all the background building first and then we'll move on to all the individual elements, coloring those in before die cutting and assembling the scene. Also along this bottom edge of the card, I'm going to go ahead and take a sentiment from the new home stamp set that reads, the address may have changed, but the welcome is the same. I think this is beautiful and works really well with the design of the card. I had played around with several different scenarios as far as sentiments go for the front of my card design, and I felt like this fit the design the best. You probably saw me move the stamp elements out of the way so that I could stamp that sentiment. I had laid my stamps out prior just to make sure I thought everything was going to fit the way I hoped it would. And I decided that the congrats on your new home sentiments could be used on the inside of this card design since they weren't really working um, anywhere on this particular scene. And I like how that ended up working out. Next, I have stamped the door and frame the welcome mat, planters, wreath, plants, and light on another piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. Again, we're going to color in these elements with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. My preferred way to do this is to lay down the dark color first and blend that out with my lighter colored marker. In this case, the door and then the little side lights there are going to be colored with the gray and light gray, and I'm really not gonna use the blender here. Um, I want these to be deeper and darker, almost kind of like a dark gray black. And then for the casing for the door, that's all gonna be with a very minimum gray and more light gray and blender, so it looks more like the house, the siding color of the house. And I'm going to keep moving my paper around. When working with Versify Nonix Black Ink, it's a pigment ink and it's going to stay wet longer. So if you don't heat set this, it can smear a little bit. 
with your hand depending on how you color. I tend to lay my hand down so I will flip my paper around as I'm coloring or I'll use a scrap piece of paper to color up to cover up parts of the images so I don't smear them. And I did smear one of the planters down there near the bottom which I will re-stamp in a little bit but um, that usually helps keep your hand out of those or out of that ink if you either spin your paper or use a scrap piece of paper to cover that up. Here I am laying down that minimal little bit of gray marker before blending out with light gray and then the blender pen which adds just a tiny bit of color to the door casing. And then I'm just going to continue to pull this color out. I have purposely left the windows empty on this design as I'm going to color these in with a light blue marker, the haze blue marker, to give that illusion of panes of glass. And I'll even go over these with glossy accents when I have die cut the elements for my card and kind of got most of the design assembled. I love this house builder set because there's so many different ways you can build a front porch and I just really am a huge fan of scene cards so this really speaks to my scene building heart. Go ahead and finish just a little bit of coloring here before we go in and do the windows really fast. I am applying the haze blue marker at an angle. There are times it's going to pick up the gray, so I'm cleaning off the tip of the marker continuously. And then I was so anxious to see how this was going to turn out, I did go ahead and die cut the window casing and the, the door and everything. And I'm going to lay this out on my card just to kind of see spatially how it's working. Now originally I did not think about using the glossy accents on the windows, even though I am a huge fan of always doing that. So I went in with a sparkle pen and added some little diagonal lines just to help with like the glass reflection. But I will cover that up with the glossy accents, but it will still be visible through the glossy accents. Let's go ahead and do the welcome mat. I wanted this to kind of look like a natural welcome mat, so I'm using mid brown and beige to color this in. I'm going to let this dry completely before stamping the welcome mat with the welcome greeting from the new home stamp set using a clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. The light itself I'm coloring in with gray and light gray. And then we have the greenery. This is really, these are small images, so I used really quick coloring to color these in. We're going to do some kind of blue and teal kind of planters for this card and then some darker greens for the greenery. I have a couple lighter greens out here, but I opted not to use those today. And instead I'll be using some little bit deeper greens. I think it goes better with the rest of the colors used in the design. I'm just laying down my color and I went with how I usually do it and lay down the dark color and then the light. These images are so small that I decided instead to go in and add all my light color and then just kind of go in and add some shading with my dark. Um, not super precise or anything of that nature, just trying to get a little bit more depth and dimension in these designs. I started out with the number of images I thought I would need, but in, in addition to what you see here, I'm actually going to stamp another couple of planters to help round out the design a little bit better. I'm going to have two planters on the left side of the door and one on the right with the big light up above the front door. 
here's the hanging plant and it was or not hanging the plant that kind of fl kind of comes out of the planter um and I decided there are some flowers on this. It was a little hard to tell. I actually just went over the green with my deep red marker and that added a nice little punch of color to all the greenery. We can die cut these images with the coordinating dies now and also stamp that welcome on the welcome mat that I mentioned a second ago. Because the zig markers are water-based markers and might stay wet a little longer, make sure that your embossing powder hasn't migrated to any of the stamped or colored images before you heat set that. I wiped away any excess powder with a paintbrush. I'm ready to start assembling the majority of my design. I can always go back and add a few additional pieces. So I'm going to adhere my door casing and door directly to the house background with my welcome mat right there at the front door and that really is looking nice. I love how the sentiment along the bottom edge of the card works with that. I've also got some foam adhesive that is going to work really nicely with the planters and plants as well as the light. So the light's going to be adhered with foam adhesive and I'm going to cover the light fixture with glossy accents so it's nice and glossy too, kind of like a metal is what I wanted this to look like. I have a fine tip applicator on my glossy accents which makes it a lot easier to apply to small areas. I'm also going to go ahead at this time and adhere this or apply this rather to the window panes in the side lights and door so this can start drying. You'll have to be a little careful to keep your hand out of it so if you feel more comfortable you could always wait and do this at the very end. I knew I was going to have a few elements that are going to overlap this and I wanted to go ahead and get this drying so that when I get to the point where I can adhere my plants and wreath to the design the glossy accents is already dry. It will dry fairly quickly and I'm applying a fairly thin layer all over these windows. I don't want it to be super thick because I do want it to dry fast. I will add just a little bit more of this and then we will go and finish stamping a few additional images to round out this front door scene card. I did all the same planters for this card, so two of the large and one of the small. Two are going to be kind of this more tealish blue color and then we'll have one that's a little more bluish. I did try out this color combination and felt like it was a little too bright blue so I'm just going to save that for another card and use the deeper blue one that I colored originally. Now I'm adhering the planters directly to the scene and applying the greenery and plants with foam adhesive. Again this just adds that nice little bit of depth and dimension. And there is the front of this adorable scene card. I absolutely love this and I love building these front porches in all kinds of ways. I think it's just very, very cool. Lots of different plants that you can use and mix and match. My second card is going to feature even more plants and things on that front porch as it's going to be a landscape portrait and I think there's more room to fill in on either side of the door. Don't forget to add the wreath to the front door here. I think that really balances out the design since there's so much going on on the bottom half and that adds a nice little punch of color up in the upper part of the card. For my second card design, we're going to do a more natural colored siding on the house with a blue door 
And then we're going to use a die cut sentiment from the Welcome Dies and another stamped sentiment from the Welcome Wreath stamp set. Just like before, we are going to stamp the double lines from the new home stamp set all across this panel using VersaFine Onyx Black ink, but this time we're doing the landscape format. I found it was easiest to use an acrylic block, but you could use a stamp positioner tool if you wanted to as well. I eyeballed it and didn't worry too much about it being exactly perfect. For the door here, you can see I've already pre-stamped a lot of the elements I'm going to be using for this design. I'm going to color this in with blue markers this time instead of the grays. This is going to add a little bit more punch of color to the side lights and the door. Really quick coloring with my deep blue and shadow mauve. And just like we did on the last one, I'm going to keep the windows open and we'll add haze blue to those. And when we have our door element die cut, we can take glossy accents and apply that to the windows. So I'm adding color to the window panes with my haze blue marker. For the door casing, I am going to go with some natural colors, just like we're going to use for the siding on the house. This time using beige and medium beige with the blender to add that color. I started out with a lighter hand with this and didn't use quite as much of the beige marker, but I will use more beige or kind of go back over parts of that to deepen and darken it just a little bit. It was a little lighter than what I really ended up wanting it. So I will go in and just add more color. These are water-based markers, so you don't want to go over them too many times as it can run the risk of pilling the paper, but the Bristol Smooth cardstock is pretty forgiving and works really great with this technique. We'll finish coloring in these side lights and windows and then move on to coloring in the rest of the elements for our card design today. For this one we're going to have two planters on each side of the window, a hanging planter, and then instead of one big light coming down over the front door we're going to have two side lights. I love that there are a couple of different options for this in this stamp set for building, again, lots of different scenes. I used most of the elements from the New Home stamp set, but I didn't use the bench, so there's even another option there. You can see I've already added color to the background of my card. I didn't worry about the center of the panel here because that's going to be covered up with our door. I'm adding that same gray and light gray color to the front porch before gluing down our front door into the center of this landscape style card. Just like before, I want to go ahead and get that glossy accents drying so that I can apply the rest of my elements when I get ready to do that. And while I'm coloring in everything else, it's a great opportunity for our glossy accents to already start drying and be dry by the time we have them colored and die cut. So I'm using that fine tip applicator again to apply the glossy accents all over my window panels. Now we're ready to color in our planters. This time I'm using deep red and pale rose to color in these planters with kind of a deeper reddish color. That includes the the two large planters and the hanging planter. And then for the buckets, we're going to give them kind of just a light beige color in a little bit, which I haven't stamped those yet. The additional planters were in 
kind of afterthought for this card as I got to putting everything together and realized I'd like to have a few more elements. The two lights were colored with gray and light gray, and then again all the greenery was quickly colored in with my light color first, and then I went back with my dark color and even a little mid-brown if I needed it, and colored in, just kind of touched the dark marker to that area to give it depth and dimension. You can see it's not a specific or a real particular coloring of each individual leaf. It's just kind of laying down a little bit of that dark color. Now for the hanging planter, we're going to need to be just a little bit more careful. There are some little flowers in this that I will add some red flowers to with my deep red marker. I also opted this time to do a blue doormat with my deep blue and shadow mauve markers. Let's go ahead and add the deep red to the flowers first and then go in with our olive green and mid green and add in that green color before we die cut all of these elements and start putting together our card. I'm adhering the hanging planter and any of the planters and buckets with foam adhesive and that also includes the side lights on either side of the door. The foam ad adhesive gives some nice depth and dimension to our scene card. Now about this time is when I realized I have quite a bit of extra room really on the front porch to add additional plants. So after I adhere my sentiment, I'm going to go back in and stamp some additional images and fill that in just a little bit more to make my front porch really show stopping. The thanks sentiment was die cut from white cardstock adhered to fun foam with stick it adhesive and then inked with fired brick distress ink. I inked it with this color as it kind of mimics the colors of the planters quite a bit so it's going to pull in a little bit more of that deep red into my card design and show up nicely over the door. We're going to lay this over the door and the foam adhesive makes that die cut sentiment pop. This is from those welcome dies collection that coordinate with the welcome wreath. On a piece of black cardstock, I'm going to stamp for your hospitality with clear embossing ink and heat set with white embossing powder. This is going to be trimmed into a thin strip after it's been heat set and adhered underneath the thanks sentiment with a foam adhesive strip. So I've got one card that's more for um, someone who is celebrating moving into a new home and this one works for a thank you card. I think there are so many different sentiments you can use with this scene builder set. I'm just really very excited about it. So I have adhered these elements. I did decide to go over the thanks then with glossy accents to really make that sentiment pop. Again, the fine tip applicator on here makes applying the ink to this really fun scripty die cut very easy. I want to get that glossy accents drying so I'm going to apply that before I stamp the rest of my planters and plants and color those in. I've also stamped and embossed the welcome mat with the welcome sentiment from the new home stamp set. We've got a couple of plants and then we're going to use the bucket planters this time and I'm going to stamp that twice and color that in exactly the same. For the bucket we're going to use a little medium beige and beige markers with the blender. So the beige is used very, very sparingly. We're going to use mid green and olive green for any of the greenery here. And then we'll use a combination of violet and light violet and bright yellow and yellow markers for any of the flowers. You can see there's very little beige added then it's pulled out with the light or medium beige and finally blended out with the blender pin to give those buckets just kind of a 
a little bit of a nice ivory look. I did color the flowers in first for this little flower bucket here and then I'll go in and add the color to the leaves. We will die cut these with the coordinating new home dies and then these are going to be adhered with foam adhesive squares as well. Kind of on the outside of each of the topiaries. So there's one and then we will do the same thing on the other side. It's just a little bit different plant to add that additional interest. Once the Glossy Accents is completely dry, I did take a white pen and kind of go back over the Glossy Accents right on top of it and draw in those diagonal lines so that the glass looks like it is reflecting the light. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these two cards featuring new W plus 9 stamps and dies from the April release. Please be sure to visit the W Plus 9 blog for more information. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye.